Hi everyone, this is Cass from Cass's Creations and Boom Gel Stain. Um, I just wanted to do a short video showing you some other applications for Boom um, in the way that we use it as a stain. It's actually a, an amazing product, Australian made, um, non-toxic, it's water-based, it's amazing to work with for all types of applications. You can use it as a paint, dye, stain, glaze, it's wonderful. Um, so I'm going to show you how to use it as a stain today. Right, so I've just got, now I probably, if I was at home, um, I would have just given this a light sand. I haven't. I've literally come straight from the hardware store, um, sort it down a bit smaller, and I'm going to do this. So if you're at home and this is a piece of furniture, you want to make sure that it's stripped right back um, to bare wood, um, and then you're going to give it a nice wipe down with a damp cloth, and you're ready to go. And I'll show you how much you use. So I'm going to do the parrotfish green here. Now forgive me if I sound a bit like I've got a cold. I'm just getting over one. Now, so there I've literally only got, now it looks blue in the camera. I assure you this is a really beautiful green color. So I've got my blob there, so to speak. I've probably used about a mil. So Initially, I'm just going to work it all over the place. It doesn't matter um, for my first work over. But of course, once we um, start working it in just a little bit more, we want to go with the grain. So I hope this is coming up. And I'll just do a little bit more on this end because I'm actually going to do a two-tone on one end just so you get the idea of the things that you can do with Boom. Okay, and I'm outside, so if you hear some birds or some noise, um, forgive me, it's just we're working outdoors. Okay, so there I've literally, I wouldn't have even used five mils of Boom there. Now what I'm going to do is get my lint-free cloth, which this isn't the best cloth, cloth but anyway so that's my lint free cloth I just give it a wipe and wipe off any excess that I might have it's that simple okay now I'll show you you can still see the beautiful wood grain through that we've used it as a stain so that's the whole point of this application this blotchiness, there's a, a, a little bit, and that's just as certain parts of the wood is actually taking up the stain more than others, but it actually finishes off really nicely. And I hope you can see that in the camera. Okay, so that in itself is just stunning. Um, you're stepping away from the traditional brown and red stains, and you're going up to something much more vibrant. So that's the parrotfish green. Now, if I wanted to jazz it up just a little bit more, the other thing I can do is actually apply some of our metallic gold and any of the other colours. So I'm just going to pop a little bit there. I've literally popped on there perhaps two mils this time. So again, I'm just going to work it all over. And I'll just do work maybe half so that you get to see. Okay. Okay. So my final piece, I'm just going to work with the wood grain. And now I'm going to wipe off any excess. I hope this is coming up nice in the camera because it is stunning. Okay, there we go. Now let me see if this is going to... Oops, sorry guys, I'll flip it around a bit. Now I hope you can see that. But it puts a beautiful sheen across it all. So now if you can imagine you've got a, a sideboard or a hall stand and it's a beautiful piece of wood but you just want it jazzed up a little bit and brought into look a bit more modern or just have your own little signature on it, here you go. This took literally seconds. So as long as your preparation is good, this doesn't take long at all. All right, so that's one Thing. Now I will leave that now um, for at least seven days and then I will go over it with a sealer. Where our sealer is um, non-toxic, it's water-based, so it's water cleanup. 
Um, it's UV stable. It's suitable for indoors or outdoors. And I would apply that with a sponge brush, a really good amount. It comes out milky, it dries clear, and it's a gloss finish. We also have a matte finish as well. Okay, so I've had several people ask me about the dark wood. So here's a nice bit of Jarrah. It's got some really pretty, beautiful patterns through here. So, like I said, I would have sanded this. This is actually not sanded too well. What I might do, I'll actually just... Okay, I didn't even know it had stopped recording, so I'm not sure how much we lost. I've applied pearlescent mint. Okay, that's our new range. It comes in a range of 10 colours. So I hope I'm not repeating myself. Now, I'm going to wipe this off, but I was saying if you wanted to, you could actually... Um, do this and then have a beautiful um, wall board or canvas above. Now, that's actually not very nice, if I'm honest. don't like that. So don't use mint. What I might do is I'll pop on our teal on top. Maybe I did go too light for the dark wood. Okay, so you can see now the white's dried. And it's given it, it's just really lightened it and lifted it. So let's try this again. Like I said, I haven't actually tried any of the pearlescence on our dark woods. So this is a first for me, so we're learning together. Okay. But isn't this easy? And you're using your hands. It's really very therapeutic. And like I said, this is non-toxic, water-based. You can just wash it off into the garden. Um, it's environmentally friendly. It will um, stain porous surfaces. So if you've got like brickwork or limestone, it will stain. But if you've got a floor, polished floorboards or liner or something like that, it won't stain at all. It'll actually just peel off. You can just wipe, damp it. Ugh. Use a damp cloth and it will just wipe off straight away. Okay, so I've left this on just for 30 seconds longer than with the other one and that's purely because it's a darker wood. So if I was doing a piece, I might actually leave it on there even for 10, 15 minutes. So let's see, just so that we get that more vibrant result. It's a bit difficult being the dark wood, see? Okay, that's a lot better. I think I just went too light with the mint. That's actually really pretty. So I do hope the camera's showing that. And I'll just bring it up a bit closer. Okay, so I'll set that one aside. Now what I might do, I'll actually just add another bit of white here and work that around. And I might leave that in place for a little bit longer too. I've just got to watch I don't mix those colours up, which you can do. I'm actually going to show you um, a blending technique as well. So I'll just leave that for a sec. I'm just going to... Okay, so now I will wipe that off. But you, there's nothing stopping you from doing two or three layers or just leaving it on longer. I haven't left it on very long at all, so bear that in mind, but for video purposes, we just wanna get this done so you can have a look at the effects. Okay. Now, so ignore this section. All right, so we'll put that aside to dry. It doesn't take long at all, but like I said, don't seal it until you it's had at least seven days. Okay. Now, this one, I'm going to show you something slightly different. It's a blending technique. All I've got here is a plate, a dinner plate. Um, and I'll just pick some colours.
Alrighty. So this is our native violet purple. I'll put a little bit of that there. That was way too much. Parrotfish green. And maybe we'll add a little bit of bling. I might do. I might go with our. No, I'll put that over top actually. I'll just grab some Mally. So this is our Mally ring neck blue. Okie dokes. So imagine this is a piece of furniture. I've done a table with this exact same method. I have a spray bottle of water handy and that's purely just to keep my boom moist because we are taking a while to work this. And I'm just gonna give my wood a light spritz. There's March flies here at the moment and they just got me. Okay, so I'll start off. I'll actually, I want my purple or my native violet purple to be my most dominant colour. So I'm going to quickly just pop some of that on. See, I don't like working with... When I did my own piece, I actually did do this. I first of all did my base with my hands and then used my sponge brush at this colour on here. So remember we're using this as a stain still. As you can see this colour, the native violet purple, is just amazing. I'm going to take it all the way down because I'll actually pop some gold on the other end so you can see what that looks like. Now I really haven't used a lot. I wouldn't have even used um, five mils in total here. I wouldn't have thought. So I've got a few grainy bits from where the I should have sanded it, like I said earlier, but I didn't, and that's okay. But not for you at home. If I was doing my furniture, I actually give it a sand, okay? And it does say that on the instructions as well. Now I'll go over it with this. Now, how does that colour? And look at how easy this is. So I've just wiped off, put it on with my hands. I'm hoping you can see. That's amazing and you still get to see that beautiful grain of the wood. Okay, now I'll just spritz this and I'll spritz my sponge brush just a little bit. All right, so I'm literally, so my purple's my dominant colour. Now I'm going to, I will go with a bit of green here and a bit of blue there and then, now can you see what I'm doing? So just so I get it nice and blended, I actually do just do a few strokes, okay? Work in long strokes. So. I'm going to pretend this is my edge here. Okay, so now I'm going back again. We want to keep this moist. It's actually quite a warm day here, so if you're working in, under really cool conditions, you don't need to worry about it. Just remember which... Um, part of the brush, your foam brush, you've used for which colour so that when you do get to blending you don't make it muddy but you can still see those stunning colours coming through. I hope it's coming up on the camera okay. So just giving it a quick blend and then applying to the work. Now I hope you see, maybe I should bring it back a bit. Okay, so what was it? My green, my mallee, and then some of my purple. Okay. All right, and there's a couple of areas here, so I'm just going to go over it again. My green, my mallee, and then a little bit of my purple, and then blend. it 
there as well. So one more. Okay, we'll do that over here. Okay, so we would leave that to dry. Now, I hope you can see this, but it looks amazing and you can see all the hues and there's no harsh lines. It's blended beautifully. So I do hope the camera's picking that up and not making it look streaky, but I'll keep going across just so you get a good look. And this is drying, but it won't, this takes literally, as a stain, it takes seconds to be touch dry. Okay, and because you can see almost like you visually, a somebody looking at your piece wouldn't be able to notice it, but you know where the start and stop of your brush line is. So if there is an area, say here, that you thought that's too light, reload your brush, your sponge brush, and just go over it again until you're happy with it. And it will just keep blending, okay? But that's stunning, that looks amazing. All right, so here's our purple here. This is still drying, so you can see these little knotty bits. They're still a bit moist. So I'm just going to go over that now with the gold as well. You can see what it looks like with the purple. So let's just give it a little bit of bling. And I hope I'm still recording. Yep. And I'll work over this again. So again, I've used my hands. You don't have to use your hands. Like I said, it's just something that I really like to do. So work it in so all these little bits of sparkle get into the areas. And then you go with the grain and we're going to wipe off with the grain. I'll get this one. Okay. So here's my cloth. And look at that. Okay, let me bring this up. I'll bring it back around. So I hope you can see this. Honestly, it really is such a beautiful finish. So bedroom drawers, look, they would look amazing. And it's a one of a kind piece. You're just not going to get replicated anywhere. And there's our blending. So you can see where it's not, um, that's a bit, little bit light. I would actually, for me, I would go over that. I'm not going to now because I've, I'm going to get into something else. Okay, so I'll leave that one to dry. Now, what if you've got a piece and it's got some ornate areas? So I'm purely using this as a stain. But remember, you can also go over chalk painted items or fer painted furniture. So I'll just... I'm going to show you this and we'll do actually a darker colour as our first wipe over and then we'll go with a lighter colour very lightly, barely touching it on top just so that you can um, highlight those um, engraved areas or that detail so to speak. Okie dokes. All right, so for this, why don't we chuck on some black? Okay, so this is our Willy Wagtail black. Now, I would actually really, I should have brought a brush out and just really worked it into these grooves. You can see there I've added way too much. We didn't need that much. But that's okay. So I'll come back down this end. Now I am really working it in with my fingers because those little groovy bits, we do want it worked in there. And like I said, really, I would have actually gone along with a brush and just worked it in and stippled it into place, if that makes sense. Because I can't get those little areas in there. And they're the areas that I do really want to work it into. So again, I'm not doing anything fancy. There's no 
amazingly, you know, technical technique. I've just worked it in with my hands. Even that on its own looks amazing. Let's see if you can see that. That's just cheap as I love boom. You can probably tell, can you? Okay. All right. Now, I'll just wipe my hands off quickly. So that's still just drying off a little bit. And we do want the black to really take on this. Okay. So I'm just going to very carefully just brush off the top. You'll see how much I'm lifting. I'm not lifting much off. And just along that edge. Okay. I wonder if I can use this now. All right, so you could have gone along with a sponge brush and just dipped it into some gold. I'm actually, I'm thinking I might use a bit of our silver this time. Okay. Okay, I paused it while I ran and got a brush. All right, this is our metallic silver. So I'm just going to plop. See how easy this is to clean? I'm just wiping up the plate just with the baby wipe. But Boom's wonderful, it's easy to clean up after. I'll keep that brush damp. Now I'm just gonna pop a little bit of silver down onto my plate. Here we go. There is perhaps half a mil. Our silver, metallic silver is quite thin. Okay, so because this is almost like a dry brushing technique, um, for furniture upcyclers you'll know what I'm talking about. But essentially, we load up the brush with a bit of our product, dust it off just a bit, or dry it off, and then we're just going to ever so gently brush across. So you'll hear me banging and clanging. Okay, now can you see that? This is really, it's just making it pop so much more. And remember, we're using barely any. Okay, so we'll go again. I don't know what happened there. It wasn't a very good piece, was it? So we're very gently touching it and we're just working very quickly. I'll keep going so you can see the whole thing. I hope I'm staying in camera view, guys. Please forgive me if I haven't. You can see I didn't dab off very much there, so it's a lot more bolder. But that's okay because it's easy to blend in. Okay. This looks really, really amazing. Okay, so I might just go back and forth this way a little tiny bit. So that's going to dry, but I'll try and bring it up closer and just show you some of that and then further away. 
if you wanted to, there's nothing to stop you from literally going ahead if you really wanted the silver to speak out a whole lot more. Look how easy that is just to get some more bling on there. So can you see that? So the amount you want it to shine through and bling is entirely up to you. So here I'm just using my fingers rather than a brush. But you can see you can get quite contrasting results. So here it's a lot more subtle, whereas here we've really gone for it. And there's a difference, but doesn't that just look amazing? All right, there we go. Um, I'll just go over these again so you can see them now that they're dry, or almost completely dry. And that lighter part is actually dried really nice. So it's blended in beautifully. So you can see it's still drying in this area here and where there's a few knots. But these areas here, up here where it's dried, it's blended beautifully and it's just stunning. And you've got all the three different um, colours there. Here's the gold on top of the native violet purple. That's our parrotfish green, which in the camera looks blue. But I assure you it's a beautiful green colour. And here it is with the gold. Okay, it just looks gorgeous. Now what about our dark colour? So remember that's the colour it was. And here we've lifted it with the white. And that was a couple of coats. But if at home, just let it stay on a bit longer. And that's with the um, pearlescent teal in the end. But that's beautiful too. All right, guys, we'll go back to this. So there you go. If you've got any questions, please ask. I'm always more than happy to answer them. Um, it's how we all learn. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.